I was looking for a simple tool to visualize the models. And then I stumbled upon this model explorer, which looks quite promising. At a high level in simple words, model explorer is simply a graph visualizer and a simple debugger. Model explorer offers an intuitive and hierarchical visualization of model graphs. It organizes model op operations into nested layers, enabling users to dynamically expand or collapse these layers. It also provides a range of features to facilitate model exploration and debugging, including the ability to highlight input and output operations, overlay metadata on nodes, display layers in interactive pop-ups, perform searches, show identical layers, GPU accelerated graph rendering, among various other features. It currently supports TF Lite, TF, TFJS, MLIR, and PyTorch model formats and provides an extension framework for developers to easily add support for additional formats. In this video, I will be showing you how you can get it installed and then visualize a model. For the sample model, I am going to use this TF Lite model, which is also free, freely available on GitHub and you can use a model of your choice. So let me go to my Google Colab where I will be showing it to you because that is easy and simple. Let's first import some of the libraries and then we will also download the model. Before that, let's change the runtime type to T4 GPU. And here, as you can see, all we are doing, we are importing the OS, temp file, few other libraries, Torch, PyTorch and Torch Vision. And then we are giving the model file path. And this is uh, store on Google bucket. So let's wait for it to get download from here. It should not take too long. All the prerequisites are done and model is downloaded. Let's specify our um, AI Edge Model Explorer, which is the name of this library. Let's wait for it to get installed. It is going to take a couple of minutes, so let's wait. Model Explorer is installed and now let's run it. First, we are importing the Model Explorer and then we are calling it Visualize function to get the model visualized through the model path. There you go. Just go down and it has also loaded eight extension and let's wait for it to load all the explorer. There you go. It is converting that file it takes a bit of a time. So let's wait for a bit. And now it is processing the graph. Model graph has been produced. Unfortunately, it is quite light. Let me try to make it a bit more brighter if I could. Okay, so I have scrolled up. From here, you can download it. You can also check um, the main one, which is the only one we have at the moment. You can also add more data at the top. And then I'm not seeing any option to make it bigger. So what I will do, I am going to open it in a new tab. And then we will try to um, zoom it out and then we will read what exactly this graph is saying okay so i have zoomed it out a bit there is a trick so you just do control plus scroll with your mouse and then it zooms it out looks good now first thing you uh, if you notice on the right hand side there is there are a few counts there is one op node count which is 269 and then there is a layer count which is 147 so what happens here is layers are the different layers of a model. Op node is operation node, which is primarily representing a single operation or computation that is performed on input data. Op nodes are the building blocks of a model's computational graph, which is representative of model's architecture. So each op node performs the specific function. For example, they either perform mathematical operation like addition, multiplication or convolution or they perform activation functions such as sigmoid, ReLU and there are few others or it could transform the data with the help of functions like reshaping, flattening or padding and then 
we have the layers which in our case are 147 so for example here the dark gray ones are no layers whereas with the white boxes are the op node and i really wish they would have made it more brighter but you know a different color scheme would be good in identifying them better but anyway so for example if you look at these boxes for the op nodes the first one graph input it represents the input data to the model serving as the starting point for computational graph then we have quantize that converts the input data into a lower precision data type for example from floating point to integer to reduce memory usage and improve inference speed then in the grayish box this is a layer so for example this efficient net one this is one layer we have resample p6 layer and we will come to it later let's go through our uh, op nodes first then we have another op node called as max pool 2d max pool 2d it performs a 2d maximum pooling operation down sampling the input data by taking the maximum value across a sliding window and then if you go down as i mentioned earlier there are some reshaping operation happening which changes the shape of the input data without modifying its content and it primarily is used to transform data between different layers or operations similarly we have here logistics one so this applies the logistic function or sigmoid function to the input data mapping <clears throat> any real valued member a number to the value between 0 and 1 and then we are dequantizing it and then eventually we are outputting the data here so this is um, one thing now if you look here there are few layers too as i mentioned for example there is this fpn underscore cells that stands for feature pyramid network cells that is a component of feature pyramid architecture that generates feature maps at multiple scales and combines them to improve object detection and segmentation similarly there is a class net layer that is um, that predicts the class or category of an object and then we have box net that uh, predicts the bounding box coordinates like x y w h of an object typically it it is used in the object detection model to refine the location and size of the detective detective object and all of these layers are commonly used in object detection architecture by the way in something like uh, retina net or yolo or rcnn those are different types of models out there but anyway um, there is also a way to visualize a pytorch model let me show you how let's go back to our google colab and then i'm just going to go here add another cell and as an example, I'm just taking that mobile net PyTorch smallish model. So let's click here. Let's wait for it. So it has started giving us the model graph of this. So let's wait for it. I'm actually going to open it in the new tab just to make it more visible. And there you go it has produced this graph for you for the model visualization you can expand these inputs by just clicking here wow look at this there are too many so if i go here i would need to shrink it let me quickly go there and then you can also expand this layer and then again you can just keep diving into it and there are a lot of them because these are huge models as you can imagine so <clears throat> that's it guys i hope that you liked it let me know what do you think about this tool i will drop the link to this repo in video's description let me know your thoughts on it if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed then please share it among your network as it helps thanks for watching